Hello and welcome to Capitol Hall. I'm Christian Gardner, and we are nearly one month into the Joe Biden administration. With any shift in power, there grows a new sense of optimism. But early on in this presidency, how has Joe Biden begun to do, as he states, unite the soul of this country? We're going to take an in-depth look at how the Biden administration has met their own promises from the campaign trail, ways he may have fallen short or succeeded. Join me are two of the best at Seton Hall, WSU News Director Ronnie Castaneda, former news assistant Willie Lewis. Guys, how you doing? Happy to be here with the two of you today. Let's get right into it. Yeah, like you stated, Christian, it's very interesting times, and I'm glad to be here talking about it with you as well as with Ronnie. Definitely a very interesting time, and we're going to jump right into it. We may only be a month into the Joe Biden presidency, but we are almost a year into a, a historic pandemic. Overall, guys, how do you feel this administration has handled the vaccine rollout and trying to get cases lowered? And there's been a lot of talk about increasing testing. How do you feel they have met the call so far? Uh, Ronnie, we'll start with you. So first off, I just want to give a quick shout out to everyone who's on the front lines of this pandemic, helping us out, working around the clock, nonstop, to make sure the American people can get a sense of normalcy as quickly as possible. Going off of that, I firmly believe that there has to be, you know, so much more aggression when it comes to this vaccine. And I think the Biden administration has been able to do that. They've been able to be adamant about all the um, regulations behind it. They've been pushing it to so many people and even locally to us at Scene Hall. New York has opened up a number of super sites for uh, vaccine distribution. Same thing as the Garden State. So obviously, I think that's more you know, within the states than the Biden administration uh, as a whole. But I think the fact that the Biden administration has just been so adamant about Moderna and Pfizer and all the other companies who are doing their best to push a vaccine, I think it's tremendous and they should be giving, you know, so much credit for that. Yeah, you talk about the vaccines, Ronnie, and, you know, recently Joe Biden stated that, you know, they just bought enough supplies of the vaccine to uh, vaccinate all the American people, you know, that they're on pace to have enough supply for 30, 300 million Americans. So you talk about the vaccine rollout at first and, you know, it is a little slow when, you know, Joe Biden acknowledged that and he kind of went and talked about the past administration uh, in terms of why the vaccine rollout has been the way it has been so far. So I think in terms of that part, I think Joe Biden is doing and, and the Joe Biden administration is doing, you know, as much as they can with the uh, hands that they was dealt with. I think the other question of part of it, too, is going to be, you know, the mask mandate as well as, you know, staying socially distant, because while the vaccine rollout is still going on, you know, the American people still have to find a way to do that, to continue to wear their masks, to be socially distant, you know, all of that, because the vaccine only does so much. You only can get so much, you know, vaccinations at a time. You have to be able to still follow those protocols, you know, that the CDC and the World Health Organization has been stating that people should do for the past couple of months. Yeah, and it seems that we have hit kind of a third wave as well, and we're trying to get past that as much as you can. And I, like you guys are saying, uh, the mask mandate, what Joe Biden is trying to do with that. But of course, still with the COVID-19 vaccine, the rollout has been slow for some, but we've been fortunate enough here in the state of New Jersey to be one of the top states with the rollout. And a lot of students here at Seton Hall have been able to get that as well. But one of the biggest things for Joe Biden during this pandemic is what he's been able to do with the COVID-19 relief bill. And now with that being voted on last Friday or with the Senate on a narrow 51 to 50 vote, they're able to pass that. Although the relief bill has been passed in Congress due to amendments being added by the Senate during Votorama, the bill must go back down to Congress. Votorama is when senators can offer as many amendments to budget resolution as desired. One of these amendments was denying to raise minimum wage to $15 an hour. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi said Thursday that they believe they will pass the bill by late February. So guys, what are your initial thoughts about this COVID-19 relief bill? And of course, we can't forget it's been so long since the people of America have received stimulus checks. Yeah, uh, I think when you look at the relief bill, a lot of the, the issues that has been coming along with the relief bill has, I mean, of course, it has been those checks, whether it should be 2000 or 1400 or you know, any un, a different amount that the people are getting. So you look at that, that's issue number one. Number two has been that minimum wage and uh, the Education and Labor Committee actually passed it so that they, the minimum wage, at least federally, 
should be increased from 725 to 15. So you know, the, the steps for that resolution, a part of the relief bill, is still starting to get the wheel spinning. Along with that, too, you, you got to just look at, you know, how are the, the um, COVID-19, these checks, how are they going to be able to release to the American people? You know, there was talks prior where it might be 1400 as one payment and then 600 as another payment. You know, should it be 2000 all at once and stuff like that? And, you know, I think with this pandemic, you have a lot of people that are still unemployed. You have a lot of people that are still trying to look for jobs or had their hours cut out that really need this money. And it, it was something that the American people really wish they would have had initially when Joe Biden, you know, first got into office. But, you know, we're coming to the realization that there's checks and balances in America and there has to be the resolution through the Senate as well as through the House. See, there are two points in this conversation that I think we both have to look at. First thing first, minimum wage. I don't think there's any doubt that it should be, you know, at $15. That is stable enough for, you know, people to at least stay on their feet. It also depends on, you know, where you work. Obviously, if you're working in New York, $15, $15 in New York is very much different than $15 in the state of Texas. If you guys understand, you know what I'm talking about. Obviously, with the taxes and everything, it's a lot harder to, to you know, find a, you know, livable life off of $15 than it is in uh, New York than it is in Texas. That's just how it is. So I think the lease making it, you know, exactly 15 would be a step in the right direction. I think there would have to be further work in, you know, allowing people who do work those minimum wage jobs to be able to, you know, make enough money so that they can sustain at least themselves. Going off of that, I think the stimulus check, and, you know, I was talking with you two earlier, I think it not hitting, you know, $2,000 is so much, it's more of a, a blessing in disguise, let's say. $2,000 to every American, that, that's sweet and all. But I think we have to understand that that money is going to be coming out of somewhere else. Or it means it's going to be higher taxes for you know, Americans all around the country. What I would have been looking for is possibly finding some kind of middle ground where, OK, these people, these certain groups of people, they don't make you know, this amount of money. OK, they deserve $2,000. People who are able to sustain themselves but have been struggling as of recently, OK, give them 1400 And people who are, you know, just need some money to get by, give them 600 I wish there were levels to the stimulus checks that would be able to you know, help the American people. I think that would be the best way to go about doing so. But nonetheless, this is a great step forward. And I'm so appreciative of this. Nearly $2 trillion in stimulus money. So I think that's a tremendous way to go about it. It's been a long time since the American people got the first one. And we're almost, like Christian has stated at the top of the show, we're almost a year in this pandemic. And the people only had, what was it, I believe, 1,500 you know, in that one stimulus check. And these are people that were out of a job for months, whether it was somebody who was out of job maybe through the summer and was able to get back into the fall, or whether it was somebody who still doesn't have a job now, I think 2000 is is the bare minimum. I, I don't want to say the bare minimum, but it's at least a step in that right direction to kind of get people going. Yes, people might have a job now, and yes, they might not need it as much, but you still have maybe credit card bills. You still have loans that you need to pay off. You still have a lot of things that as, as an American, you need to get back to and you need to be able to pay again. And I, I think that at least just getting that 2000 out first would really help out. I think your plan, Ronnie, in terms of, OK, let's try to siphon it out based on who makes what, I think that that would be a good idea after the initial payment gets out to the American people. But I think something we also have to take into account Yes, there is no doubt that there are so many Americans right now who need that money. They need it to be able to sustain you know, their life, take care of their kids or whoever lives under their roof. But let's not forget, over the summer, there were numerous of cases of people who were actually making more money off of the unemployment checks than they were when they were back working. A crazy statistic to look at. But nonetheless, I think we're all in agreement here that the American people, you know, they can't wait any longer. I mean, you know, this has been some, you know, insane statistics that we've seen and just the overall 
amount of people that just need this help. I think there's no doubt about it. Maybe there might have to be, you know, work later on, depending on, you know, who needs what. But I think first things first, you got to get this money to the American people ASAP. I think, Ronnie, you bring up a, a good point. It's a great debate that you guys are having. But the amount of money, so many Americans have been waiting on this for so long. It seems like we've been debating this all the way back since the first stimulus check, all the way back in May and in April. And the things that are happening within the Senate and the Congress, Americans can't wait any longer. But over the past year, we've heard a lot of promises from the Biden campaign. Uh, let's shift things in a different direction away from COVID. Uh, what are some of the things that you feel like they've met or fell short in some time during this first month? Ronnie, how are you feeling? So I remember when Joe Biden was firstly uh, inaugurated, got into office, a lot of people were talking about the near 50 plus executive orders that he signed within uh, his first three days in office. Great move, but I read an article, um, or I believe it was a multiple articles from a group of um, uh, companies and media outlets that were saying that they didn't like the idea that uh, Biden was just going about and getting you know executive orders out. A lot of people thought you know he was weaseling his way away from legislation, which is obviously the bigger thing when you're trying to pass a law. Executive orders, you know, the president doesn't need anyone's approval other than the Supreme Court. And obviously no one's going to deny, you know, Biden trying to help out the people during a pandemic. But I've read that a lot more people are hoping that he could bring this up to legislation, get it to Congress, get some laws passed that it could permanently help the American people. Now, I think that's ridiculous. I don't see anything wrong with Biden and his executive orders. They've been helping the people, helping the masses. I think that's the biggest thing you have to look at. And, okay, so what? He's not getting it through legislature. Let him focus on getting help to the American people now, and then they'll pass it through you know, legislation at a later point because the people need it right now. And I think to kind of tag along all of those executive orders that you have been talking about, Ronnie, the one thing that really you know, struck with me has been the executive order to try to help climate change in the United States because we have seen throughout these 10 years how much climate change is really affecting the weather, how much it's affecting, you know, people's health and everything. And, you know, that's one of the, the main things, of course, dealing with the pandemic is number one, but also dealing with, you know, the climate change and being able to help the environment and the national uh, Climate Task Force was able to meet up recently and try to talk about the goals that the Biden administration has for climate change and how to tackle it on over these next couple of years in terms of, you know, getting emissions down, in terms of eliminating fossil fuels and all that. And, you know, again, I think the pandemic, number one, has to be, you know, under Biden's belt to make sure that he is able to get this curved. But I think number two has to be being able to help the environment because it doesn't only affect, you know, the weather that we're seeing right now in New Jersey with all this snow happening over these past couple of weeks, but it also helps out if you're able to improve the environment, it helps out people's health too, because you have a lot of people that are living in areas where they might have a lot of fossil fuels or they're living in areas where, you know, there's a lot of factories that's dealing with a lot. So, you know, being able to help out the environment has to be another thing that this administration has to get done. Yeah, you guys bring up a lot of good points. The amount of executive orders has been historical for any president within his first few months. And climate change, one of the biggest things, and one of the biggest things that Joe Biden promised was rejoining the Paris Accords as well, which he's done and becoming more of a global executive. And that's what climate change is all about. Uh, but guys, let's focus into something that you want him to closely follow moving forward after this first month. Uh, for me, one of the biggest things is immigration. And this past Friday, he changed the legislation that was put in by the previous administration uh, about asylum seekers. And they'll be able to enter the US as their claims are being processed. Uh, this is different from the Trump administration as those asylum seekers would be left in Mexico. But for you guys, what are some of the things that you focused on? You talked a little bit about climate change, Willer. Yeah, I think that's kind of the one and two things. I think, again, trying to just be able to, to figure out you know, this, this COVID-19 relief bill, I think, I know it, it's not all in Biden's hands right now, but, you know, trying to just 
deal with one way or another to get the American people out of this pandemic because, it, it, like you stated, it's been almost a year since the first lockdowns have been um, initiated in the United States, and you know people are starting to get sick of it, to say the least. So I, I think trying to get a way to curb COVID-19 has to be you know, the first thing. And then again, like I stated, the climate change. Uh, uh, Joe Biden and the Biden administration wants to get these goals that they have for his term, you know, out in the middle of April. And I think if we're able to help that out, we're seeing New Jersey starting to take the trend in, in helping uh, with, with global warming. We're seeing California trying to, you know, take steps to help out with global warming too. So if we're able to get it on a national stage and even in turn, maybe some other countries around the world will follow the United States in their trend, it can really help out for not only ourselves, but for our grandchildren and our children. Yeah, and uh, speaking more off of that, I think I, I'm so happy to see that he has gotten himself and gotten the nation back into the World Health Organization. First off, when we were taken away from that, I was astounded. I, I really couldn't believe it. I saw no reason you know, for that to be the case. But something I'm going to want to look at is getting students back into the classroom. Obviously, that's more or less of an in-state look, but I think I would... I would love to see Biden make more of a push to that, make sure that teachers can get vaccinated because, hey, I mean, we're all college kids at this time. These are very difficult times, whether you're learning or teaching. We've seen it on both sides. Very difficult. And I would like to see him, you know, do a, not a better job, but I would like to see him take more of initiative in trying to get kids back into the classroom. The second thing I'd like to look at more is he talked a lot about relieving student debt. Listen, we're all college kids. Our ears are going to jump once we hear about that. I'm very excited to see his plan and seeing, you know, how he hopes to help, you know, guys like us who have, you know, loans and people who have loans of over $100,000 coming out of college and how that will help them, uh, you know, with their future. Because, listen, the, I believe it's taken such a jump in recent years that, you know, it's so ridiculous. Student loans are the biggest, um, I think, deficit now they've passed home loans and auto loans as of recently. And I think it's crazy when you look at that. So President Biden, I'm going to be very excited to see you know what you have in store for that. And it's going to be a long process, but I think the main key would be to stay patient as he continues to ponder that. Student debt was one of the biggest things that led Biden into the White House. And seeing all those young voters coming out for him because of that, uh, still waiting for him to touch upon that and for college students one of the biggest things, and you talked about it earlier, Ronnie, on how that could relieve a lot of debt moving forward, even looking towards maybe even the COVID-19 relief bill. But finally, to wrap up things on this show, we're going to talk about the previous administration as we're underway in the second Trump impeachment trial. Guys, we're going to go back to January 6th, and I want to get your initial reactions on that day. And what, what things were like for you when you turned on the news that day, or maybe even newscasting for WSOU? <laughs> well, uh, Willer and I were actually together on that day. Um, we were at the station. I remember I was watching the TV, and I, I was shocked. It was madness, something out of a movie. You know, it's like Olympus has fallen. People are climbing up on the Capitol building, but it was real people, fireworks, fires, flags. And then, you know, I didn't, I didn't even know they had gotten inside until I went on Twitter and I saw people taking furniture, taking Nancy Pelosi's desk, taking statues. It, it, was, it was, I think it's one of the darkest days in American history when Americans turn on their leaders, people who at the time were trying to help them as well. Because let's not forget, the reason they stormed that day was because... It was the day that they were going to, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? They were going to certify Joe Biden's presidency on that day. And whether you like it or not, it was planned. Thousands and thousands of people had gone into that building. And they were trying to just mess that whole thing up. I couldn't believe it. I mean, well, I'm pretty sure, like I said, we were there same day, and we, sh we shared some similar you know, feelings about that. Yeah, I, I think in, in terms of, Everything that we have seen over the past couple of years, this definitely has been one of the most shocking moments to me because it, it, it really, I can't fully understand how you could get a band of people 
and rush a government building like that. I mean, I know last year or a year, like two years prior, you know, people were talking about storming area, you know, 51, and, and you know, there was that. And, you know, I, I don't think that that was ever going to really happen. But, you know, people storming the Capitol building was honestly just like that. It, it's like you're, you're, you're going into a building where you have these people that are, are very in, much in high power and people that are normally well protected, whether it's by police, whether it's by security and, 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 and national arms and stuff like that. You, you have this building that should be well secured and you just have thousands and tens of thousands of people rushing the building, going inside, like Rodney stated, you know, stealing stuff from the Capitol building. And it's just shocking to me that something like that would happen. We're seeing on Twitter, you're seeing the police officers trying their best to, to help out everything. I believe there was one officer from New Jersey who unfortunately lost his life because of that. You know, so rest in peace to, to him as well as, you know, my condolences to his family. But overall, I, I, I can't understand how everything that has been happening over the past couple of years, how, how that was kind of the, the, the climate of, or, or the climax of just everything that has happened over the past couple of years. January 6th was such a crazy day for everyone in America. And that's why we see ourselves today in another impeachment trial. So very quickly, guys, in a few sentences, I want you to give your thoughts about this if it's completely necessary to follow things through, even with Trump no longer being in office. Uh, I think it's ridiculous that this is the point we've gotten ourselves into as Americans and you know, as political leaders. I think that's such a ridiculous, you know, the fact that we got there is something sickening. I think that's something we should never look back at, learn from it, and let's pray that we never go back to that. That is ridiculous. I think it's pretty um, obvious, uh, looking at the impeachment trial, that he's not going to get impeached for the second time. We've seen him, you know, with the support of his fellow Republicans, that it's not going to happen. But the way they're going about it is just something that can leave, you know, a pit in everyone's stomach. The fact that they're saying... He, he didn't exactly say, you know, oh, let's storm the Capitol. Well, kind of tiptoed his way around it, you know? So, listen, you could step on glass, it's going to break your foot no matter how big the shard is. But, listen, I just think it's a, it's a heavy time in America right now. And the fact that we're still seeing this is pretty ridiculous. Yeah, I think in terms of this trial, you just have to look at it in terms of a sense of, you're a political figure and you're the president at that and you should be held to a high, if not the highest standard that Americans should be held at. And I, I think when you look at all the stuff that, that got him to this impeachment trial, whether it was, you know, tweets that he had tweeted out before, you know, kind of alluding to, you know, that date and what might happen on that date, or the video that he released afterwards, um, not really condemning the people that was going to the Capitol building. I think when you have all of that together, you, you, you're showing that as a president that, that you try to utilize your, your powers for not the right things. And I think what, whatever side this impeachment trial goes, it just it should show people that you, know, you might be a president, you might think that you have all these powers, but you, you should still be held to the highest standard. Yeah, it's definitely in a very interesting time to be in America. And I, I'm along with you, Ronnie. I believe that President Trump will still get acquitted, but that's going to do it here for Capitol Hall. I want to thank you all for joining us with us here, here at Pirate TV. We're very excited to be back here in the studio. And before we go, just know that all of the opinions shared on this show are of the individual and do not reflect the university or the Com Arts School as well as Pirate TV. But for that, once again, I'm Christian Gardner alongside Ronnie Castaneda and Wilner Lewis. We'll see you next time.